Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this is episode number 22 of my What Makes It Work series, and this will be dedicated to the ubiquitous Ohio Art Etch-A-Sketch that's been around, I think, ever since I was a teenager, maybe even before, and I always wondered how one of these worked, and I bought this for a buck at a garage sale, so I'm going to sacrifice it, and they must have made millions upon millions of these, let alone the... Uh, uh, the profit from them, but uh, I would like to do use the uh, the old Proctoscope, Proctoscope, which I bought recently. So I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm going to drill a hole into the side here and see if I can see what's going on in there. My biggest disappointment uh, with these over the years is it's really quite difficult to, to use and to make something uh, pretty, or even write your name with this thing but uh, some people have developed quite a skill but basically you can't produce circles because it's, uh, it's really working uh, in uh, just like an X and a Y axis and to get a circle you have to uh, or a curve you gotta move both knobs at the same time but the reason I'm showing you this close up here I've attempted to uh, uh, make a bare spot here to see if we can see what's going on in there and uh, I always thought these were uh, magnetic in some way and we'll see if they are but through the little window now that I am attempting to erase here you can see that there's a pointer or a stylus or a magnet or whatever it is in there and I'm able to move it back and forth now if I can uh, put some light in there by after I drill that hole we'll see what it looks like through that window that may be uh, may not work at all. Let me drill that hole now. As usual I'm instantly angered by battery drills because I drilled an eighth inch pilot hole in here and the battery had been on the charger and I barely was able to drill that eighth inch hole through styrene plastic no less. So let me shift to a real drill. I would love to smash this on camera, but many people get mad when I uh, tear things up, but those are even-tempered people that are willing to accept poor products. I'm not. I really much prefer drills that are uh, corded. They start every time, although I showed this recently. This is another Craftsman. It's industrial, you know. But I bought this at a garage sale for fairly cheap. The reverse stuff is working on it. So what's with this Craftsman stuff? All right, let me try to see if I if this has enough power to go through there. I'm going to use the Christmas tree bit, unibit, if you will. Okay, I, I drilled an eighth inch hole in there, and I do see a little bit of mechanism. I do not want to damage that in any way, and uh, the practoscope here just barely fits. So I'm going to open this up probably with a Dremel a little bit. And uh, the first thing I was going to do was look in there with the flashlight, but of course, well, that one works, but I, the first flashlight I picked up didn't work, you know. So this morning's been an exercise in uh, futility and, and uh, anger for me, so I have to calm down, although I had three cups of coffee. But now what I'm going to do is put the, the light in here, just like this, and uh, I'm going to turn out the house lights, and we'll see what it looks like here, because I'm able to literally backlight it. And the fact that the lines appear black is uh, due to the fact that it's dark inside of here. So now I'm going to backlight it, which is just the opposite of what they would want uh, for the toy. Let me kill those lights. Now with the house lights out and it being backlit with that little uh, LED light, you can see the stylus or pointer and a little bit of the mechanism and if I could scrape off a little more of that uh, it would also be evident but don't worry I intend to take this thing apart yet but I just wanted you to see what it looked like from this side and, and really the whole secret to this thing is the fact that we have coated this lens or this screen with some material and then we are taking a stylus and scraping it off in a design however creative as the uh, operator I guess alright I gotta tell a joke now bear with me 
You see, I intend to put the endoscope, the proctoscope, uh, into this hole, but it reminds me of a story where uh, doctors were at an international convention, medical doctors, and they're talking about things over, uh, over cocktails one night, and uh, one doctor was from Russia and another was, one was from Switzerland. So the Switzerland the doctor said, uh, we think that brain surgery is the most difficult uh, surgery there is. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, the doctor from Russia? And the Russian doctor said, oh, oh, in Russia, by far the most difficult operation is a tonsillectomy. And the Swiss doctor said, tonsillectomy, that's the easiest one. We do that in a dental chair here. And he said, oh, not in Russia. These people are so tight-lipped that we have to perform that operation through the rectum. Drum roll. All right, uh, forgive the poor quality of this, but I'm uh, at my computer now with the Etch-a-Sketch between my knees and the endoscope, proctoscope in my left hand. You can see I've really opened up this hole because there's an interference in there with the, with the wires and mechanism. But let me cram this thing in here. I have to part the waters a little bit with a with a piece of, of wire like that to get around that mechanism but now I'm inside now the screen of the Etch-a-Sketch is to the right and there is the stylus which I'm going to call it. and you can see me moving it back and forth now I'm not I don't know why I'm going to all this trouble because I think I'm going to take the back off of this thing anyway but you can see that powder in there and already the camera and my fingers are uh, contaminated and it appears to be like an aluminum based powder and what happens here now is that the stylus moving in two directions is uh, scraping the uh, the aluminum off of the screen as I move it back and forth pretty neat and you can see that everything in there is coated with the dust and then when I turn the uh, the thing upside down, it, of course, it'll erase it. You know how that works. So, see if we can see. You can see the powder moving around. And I suppose it's going to coat the camera now. Yeah, the camera is coated, and we can't see anymore because I covered it with aluminum. All right, I got to back out, and we're going to go back down in the basement. And I'm pulling the. Uh, oh boy, I'm pulling the endoscope out. I know you can't see anything now, but the LEDs are covered with aluminum and so is the uh, end of the camera and so are my fingers. I'm back in the basement reading the Chicago Tribune Sunday edition just to see how many people were brutally murdered in Chicago last night, but of course that wouldn't be covered on the front page, so I'm not far enough back into the paper to even find that. But you can see how much I got that. I hope you like the little endoscope deal. I'm not sur sure if it served a purpose, as I said, but let me shake this and see if any of this nasty stuff comes out. Oh, gee, creepers, did it come out. And there it is. It almost appears to be tiny beads. I'm going to put some in my hands, although I, I really don't like the idea. Oh, it just feels, look at that. It feels as slippery Oh, I could be the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz. You know, they almost killed the Tin Man when they were filming that. Because it was so poisonous, but they didn't care back then. Yeah, see, they appear to be uh, little beads that are uh, maybe styrofoam or something. They, they don't weigh anything. But look at the way that coats... I had to go to the county seat and get fingerprinted a few years back, even though I had been teaching at the high school for 40 years, and then I was off for a couple of years. Then they no, you've got to be fingerprinted. I thought they were joking when they told me that. No, you got to be fingerprinted. And I was waiting for them to smile. They weren't smiling. I had to go over there, and she had a heck of a time getting fingerprints off of me because she says, boy, you must use harsh chemicals or something because we can't hardly get a fingerprint off you. And I thought, good, I don't want that on record. Yes, I'm, I'm bitter about the loss of freedom. I hope that you are too and aren't just accepting this uh, like a frog being boiled in water. Okay, uh, I got to wash up now before I can touch anything. 
and uh, I know this is running a little long but I hope to cut the back off of this thing now so you can get a, a, a complete picture of what it looks like as far as that mechanism we know what makes it uh, what's happening in there now though don't we that's a fairly substantial quantity of that stuff and I washed my hands and it wasn't easy to to get off but it almost seemed greasy so the lava soap uh, did cut it but uh, now I'm hesitant to touch that again because it gets all over the tool oh there's some more look at that shoot there's like a quarter cup full maybe in there still coming out now this thing is extremely well built with thick plastic and it is styrene I could smell it when I was going through with the with the uh, Dremel tool uh, because I'm sure they don't want these to break open on the living room floor but I think this type of toy is falling out of favor with children because it's too slow moving they are used to video games and all that type of thing and uh, alright I'm ranting again sorry here's the game plan I intend to take uh, the Ryobi and that's an abrasive wheel and cut all the way around but it tends to melt it so if, if it melts it too much and this I drilled an exploratory hole and this styrene is oh maybe only a sixteenth inch thick but I'd like to go all the way around if I don't break this and if that doesn't work like I said I'll try that little saw blade they provide but I think that'll create heat too maybe I need to slow down the RPM all right. Oh, that smell. There's the back. That's just there's nothing there. It's just a backing. And I'm getting full of it again. As mentioned before, this toy is hermetically sealed. I mean, there's no way a small child can get inside of there, not unlike the 8-ball. And I did uh, an 8-ball, what makes it work, that's number 4. Uh, go ahead and watch that, because nobody has yet. But here's a knockoff of, a, of an 8-ball called the Orb. I was going to take it apart. That also was a dollar. I buy anything for a dollar. Have you noticed that? Because a dollar is 20 cents, so a dollar is nothing. You could light your cigar with a dollar. It might be cheaper than a match. Alright, let's explore what this thing looks like here on the back side. Remember this is upside down. The screen is, is below me and this is the stylus that is again wiping the aluminum coating off of the screen and it can be moved again and basically X and Y uh, directions and it reminds me very much of a plotter. If you've seen a plotter at work for uh, making drawings in a in a drafting room that's what it's doing here but isn't that neat and it's really precisely a, or I should say very precision uh, constructed probably has many patents on it I should look the patent up because I don't think anyone else has copied this now uh, when I turn the knob I'm gonna reposition the camera and show you what's happening here as far as the wires that go all the way around that are uh, moving uh, the stylus and the stylus is on rods not wires I attempt to show details in my videos that no one else shows I hope you appreciate it and I'm not going to too much uh, jabber in here but here's how you erase these things and that's that's the little pattern I made a minute ago and uh, I didn't uh, put enough emphasis on it that this is not a magnet and magnetism has nothing to do with this and that's kind of what I thought happened for all these years but when you turn this upside down and shake it as a child would to erase it and start over you're merely redistributing the powder over it like that that's all, that's all that's happening and can you see that that erased it now I'm gonna flip it over but first over the garbage can so I don't have a mess here and I'll be right back hang on and it has been erased and we got a fresh new screen so that's how that whole system works let me uh, dump that powdered aluminum into my specimen cup here and see how much we've got 
and some of it I spilled. Luckily, I my mom always told me to put newspapers down. Hope your mom did. But w with what I s spilled there, you can see that this cup is filled to about uh, well, there's no graduation, so to about there. That's nasty stuff. I intend to immediately seal that in a baggie and throw it away before it makes a mess in my shop and I gotta wash up again. Some of this information is totally out of sequence here and it's just for the fun of it but I, I have a lot of thoughts today because of my uh, all the coffee I drank but you know you're seeing uh, th these uh, Harbor Freight ads in, in every newspaper every town and they got a doggone uh, grand opening, this is grand opening see, every week someplace and, and you get one of these flyers whether or not the uh, grand opening is, is near you but uh, I like to go to those stores and I, I got a lot more to talk about that on, in some other video and I, I do own some of this stuff and okay getting back to this flashlight that infuriated me a minute ago and this isn't very old but I, I opened this up a few minutes ago and there's a energizer it's all corroded and uh, you know they don't leak so I'll put a fresh Duracell in there, but this is probably, there's a little corrosion on the end of that spring. I'll wipe that off and, and see if this works, but nothing more annoying, and now it works, nothing more annoying than to pick up a flashlight and to have it not work. Uh, don't you agree? Now I've made a bunch of videos where I made an ADD version of it to shorten it. Um, they weren't well received. Some people liked it those with ADD I guess but uh, others didn't I, said, I like the detail but uh, since I'm getting contaminated with with this stuff uh, it reminds me of a story and something that I did at school uh, the, the kids would tamper with things they would tamper with thermostats um, or anything they could to annoy you or just to have their own way just to be ornery but in the welding shop there were three large switches on the wall that would kill all the power and uh, in case of an emergency and that was probably required by law or something so um, you could never catch who did it but the power would go off everybody was well my welder doesn't work my welder doesn't work so I'd have to go around and, um, and then reset the thing and the breaker was so large it looked like something in a Frankenstein movie I had to use a, a tool to get the leverage it was just an enormous breaker but what I did and I learned that from another teacher is that I would take um, anti-seize and this stuff is you know how messy that is and I would put that on the switch and then if anyone touched the switch which they would uh, they would have this on their hand so immediately after the power was shut off the next time I'd have all the kids line up in a row and say hold out your hands and the kid with the silver hands was the culprit I would send them up to the Dean but of course the Dean didn't care all right, on with the show. This is one of the knobs. So as I turn it over, you can see that. And I should have cut more of this out, but I'm not in the mood now because the video is running way too long. But you, can you see how some of the tiny little, I'm going to call them cables, are wrapped around that. And then we've got two pulleys, little V-shaped pulleys on each corner. Similarly, on this end, as I turn the uh, knob, you think those little cables would break, wouldn't you, over the years? Again, most of the powder is out of there. You saw me remove the powder. So if I can turn it off over without making a mess, I'm doing over the garbage can here. There is the design at random that I just made. And if I wanted to remove that, of course, I would turn it upside down and shake that dust and it would in effect erase it. So that's how an Etch-a-Sketch works. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you to my many loyal subscribers and followers who leave positive comments and, and encourage me and it keeps me going. And I hope to do many more like this in my... Uh, show this to your children and, and other people uh, that might be interested in something this that is not so mechanical and machine shop oriented like so many of the things that I do. And uh, with that said, this is Tubal Cain saying have a good day and I'll see you in my next video.